Oh, hello, I'm Xavier Tisdale. Of course, I always check my makeup in here before every single video. <laughs> to the channel I'm the girl on glasses aka the a, a, a. I'm the girl on glasses aka Xavier Tisdale and holy sh my hair be looking crazy today if you guys watched the very 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 beginning of this video yes I have a new channel intro so yeah it's got a lot of aesthetic into it <laughs> But anyways, for today's video, we are going to be delving into 17 things that I learned at 17 years old. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> so without any further ado, let's get started! Woo! <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry y'all. I can be such a wild ass donkey sometimes. <laughs> Number one live in the here and now. In the previous years leading up to now, I've always had some kind of inner desire to want to go back and change mistakes I made in the past. I would think to myself, what would happen if I had done this differently? Or I could have felt a lot better if I had said this. And I admit, I still struggle with these things today. We all do. But here's the deal. As much as we want to go back and fix those mistakes, we know we can't. It's just not worth it. Live in the present moment. Don't waste your time trying to go back and change something that you can't change. Don't waste your time trying to go back and change something that has already happened. It's not worth it. Don't be so worked up about like the future in general. Like, Don't waste your time trying to change what lies ahead because you don't know what lies ahead. You don't know what lies ahead until it just comes right at you. So the best thing to do right now is to just keep your eyes on the here and now and work towards whatever it is that you wanna achieve in life. Because right now, you have plenty of time to do those things, especially while you're still young, like me. <laughs> yep. Number two, and this is a very important one. Just because it shines doesn't mean it's a star. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Xavier, what the f do you mean? Well, let me put it this way. So let's say you're walking down the street and you see this really hot looking guy that's six foot four and he's got that nice dark brown hair and gorgeous eyes and luscious lips. And he confesses your feelings. He confesses to you that he loves you and that he'll never ever leave you and that he'll always be by your side every step of the way. And without thinking, you say yes and you commit to the relationship. And at first, everything seems to be going so well. That is, until you realize that it's become pretty evident that all he wants to ever talk with you is sex. He only wants to do very sexual and horny things with you for no reason. He always has these unusual horny feelings towards you for no reason at all. And that's not normal. Then it gets down to a point where he starts treating you like He says a lot of things behind your back. And before you know it, he's with another girl. Guys, this is something that I actually dealt with last year. When it came to leaving the relationship, I was just so hesitant about it. Like, I was so blinded by this person's looks that I didn't fully recognize the red flags and then do something about it. Like, I was so afraid to confront him about his feelings, these really unusual feelings that he had towards me. And it it only led to just me being mistreated, me, me getting the blame for everything, and... Yeah, I, I just had to separate. I had to block him from my life. And the craziest thing about it was, he was three years younger than I was. So why in the hell did I let some little kid try to control my life and it's become pretty clear that I've had a lot more experience than this person did. To make matters even worse, he made me look as though I was a terrible person by saying that he would never ever date me again. I'll never date you again because not only do you have a personality, but you basically use somebody for your own sexual desires. And then you expect this relationship that you have right now to last? If you're just sitting around always talking about sex, always doing some really sexual stuff, and then lying, spreading lies about people, what kind of a girl would ever want to be with you? Y'all, I'm sorry. I, I have to be really mean about this because the way people are right now, it's not a safe place out there. Don't even care about people's feelings. Just care about telling the truth and only the truth, okay? Even if it means having to show off your dark side. 
Hate to break. <laughs> Number three, other people's opinions and perceptions about you don't mean okay? It's not important. Don't give a m about the things that people think of you, okay? You know yourself a hell better than they do. It's just like with singing, for example. If you know that you have been practicing and practicing and practicing all this time to get where you are today, and you know that you sound good because you've been doing the work, you've been actually putting in the effort to, you know, improve your skill and agility, and they still have something to say. I mean, you can just tell them something like this. You mother I know my voice a whole lot better than you do. And so I'm gonna keep on using it. And while you're at it, do me a favor. You can go and kiss my big, beautiful, natural born, talented black ass and walk the hell out. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's not about how somebody else sees you. It's about how you see yourself. You know yourself a whole lot better than anybody else does. So don't let somebody else's boy find who you are. You better embrace that and not give a flying f about the stuff that people have to say about you. Number four, love yourself the way you are. You know, he didn't mean for you to be like Taylor Swift or somebody, no. I mean, she may have some more moolah or whatever and she may be this big natural born long uh. bombshell, but do you have what she has? No, and that's okay. It's okay to experiment with different hair colors. I mean. I know I went blonde a couple times before myself too. Maybe I'll do it again this summer so I can surprise you guys. <laughs> but we also need to appreciate our real natural hair too, which is why last year I decided to take a break from all the crazy colors and just embrace my real natural raven black hues. Never be afraid to embrace your truest self without giving a rubber duck about what the f gonna think, okay? You are you, so you go on and be you and love you too. <laughs> Number It takes work to reach great heights. How did so many of these popular YouTubers that you see every day get where they are today? Work. How do singers get successful? Work. How did Google become the number one most used search engine in the world? Work. Work it, baby, work it. I had to move from over there to over here because my phone had to charge. It was low on battery and the charger's literally all the way across from me. So anyway, but yeah, it takes work. Okay, I've learned that if you want to achieve something great, then you gotta work towards it. Okay, you know, it doesn't just come at you like a bullet of luck, okay? <laughs> it took me a heck of a lot of work just to even be able to make this video for y'all. Like, it's taken me the past seven days now. Today's the 27th, and I first started making this video on the 20th, so that's seven whole days, you guys. This has to be the most longest video that I've ever made. I'm taking a lot of editing, a lot of revising, a lot of time and effort just to make this video be able to stand out. But hey, the more work you put into making your videos, the more you'll get noticed. <laughs> the more your channel will grow and the more successful you'll get, right? <laughs> but just remember, if you want to achieve it, work it! Work it. <laughs> Number six, it's okay to say no. So let's say your friend asks you to come to a party on Monday night, but you know you have homework to do. Or let's say you're at the school dance and then some has to come up to you and ask you, hey, you want to try some booze? <laughs> what do you do? Say no and go. <laughs> Your pressure is real and nobody should be forced to do things they don't want to do or shouldn't do for that matter. Set your boundaries. Don't waste your time with my <laughs> trying to make you do sh things. Hi everybody, so it's the next day. Um, I have a different outfit on and I got a different hairstyle and I have some different makeup on, but yeah. Let's continue. Number seven, it's okay to have time away from social media. As a matter of fact, it's beneficial. The time we spend scrolling on our phones all day does have a key impact on our lives. If you're like me and you're that girl who spends countless hours on your phone, your laptop, your TV, trying to keep up with the latest news and stuff, you might feel like there's no escape from the internet, which there technically isn't because this is the age that we're living in. <laughs> But here's the thing. Excessive use of social media has been linked to feelings of isolation from the real world, FOMO, which is the fear of missing out, self-comparison to others, and being annoyed by things you see online. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, 
Some of the stuff that I mention right now is what's happening to me. I'm constantly on YouTube every single day, like every hour, every minute of my day. And I'm trying I'm always trying to keep up with the latest videos, the latest comments, trying to keep up with the Joneses. But I just do say taking a social media break can give you more time to do anything you want. It can help you have better gratitude, it can lift up your mood, and you'll even have better self-esteem. Social media becomes too much for you. Walk away from it for a while. You won't think less of yourself if you do. And you'll be glad that you did. <laughs> oh my god! Number eight. <laughs> Do you feel like you overwork yourself too much? Are you an overthinker? Do you pressure yourself to move on with the task even though your brain's like It's me for sure. Whatever it is you need to do to separate your mind from all the shit you have to do, just do it. It's like with social media, it's okay to take a break every now and then. Grab a snack, get on your pet's nerves. <laughs> or just take a nap. Sleeping beauty vibes. <laughs> so once you're fully relaxed and ready to tackle on that tricky algebra question, you better go for it, baby. <laughs> Kick it in the. <laughs> Number nine. If you see a good opportunity, don't be afraid to take it. Suppose you're doing a test and you fuck it. Oh, I mean flunk it. <laughs> You are so exhausted from doing all those other assignments that you just want to take the notebook, take the goddamn pencil, and throw it out the window. But then you remember, it's due tonight! This may be your only opportunity to pull your grade out by doing this simple quiz. So which one will you choose? Flunk it or fight it? If you chose fight it, then you're kicking <laughs> man. <laughs> if you see an opportunity that's gonna help you reach your goals, then don't hold back. Even if some risks come with it, know what you're getting into first. And then you can win <laughs> it. All right guys, so we made it to number 10, but we still have seven more to go, so let's get to it. Number 10 is a really important thing that I'd like to share with you guys, and that is Feeling sad doesn't make you a weak person. You guys, we've all had our fair share of good days and bad days. And whoever lied to you and told you that, oh, everything's going to always be happy and full of joy and laughter, just wants you to be part of their Life's not perfect. Life isn't always gonna be the way we want it to be. I'm not a perfect person. You guys aren't perfect people. And that's okay. We're bound to making mistakes. And we've all had our fair share of regrets. We've all had our moments of sadness. We've all had, you know, those moments where we've just cried our eyes out. But I wanna let you guys know something really important. Just because something made you sad doesn't mean that you're a weak person. It doesn't mean that you're overly emotional. No. Just because you cried or have cried before doesn't mean that you don't have that inner strength inside of you. It's simply just a way of washing all those emotions out of your soul. You guys, it's very, very rare for me to cry myself and as, as I've gotten older, but it doesn't mean that it hasn't happened. There have been times where I myself have felt so crushed by other people's nasty actions and most of it often happened at home, away from my social circle, away from my friends. It was all personal. And of course, I stood up for myself, but then still, all the pain, all those words, all the emotion that was targeted at me, I just had to let it all out. And I'm sure there are lots and lots of people watching this video right now that have had a similar situation. But let me tell you this. You are still here and God gave you the strength to move past it all. None of it is your fault. Don't bottle your feelings up. Acknowledge how you're feeling and most of all, do something that'll make you feel better. Pray, meditate, listen to some music. Do little things like that so you can overcome your feelings of sadness. Those feelings that you have aren't temporary. They won't last forever. You have so much to be grateful for and you can move past it. It can be done. But anyway, enough about the negative stuff. Let's move on to the positives. Number 11, 
When it comes to achieving your goals, sometimes it means breaking the rules. I gotta tell you guys something. Based on all my research that I've done, if you want to have a career in singing, then you've got to promote yourself some kind of way. I grew up in a household where I was never allowed to have any kind of social media. No YouTube, no Instagram, no Snapchat, none of that. I kept it very private from the people I knew. But with this whole YouTube thing, I was really on and off during as the years went by. Like, I wouldn't really post very much videos. I had a relatively low subscriber count. I stayed to myself, stayed away from the public eye, but I knew where I wanted to go with this. So when I was 15, back in October 2022, I would make a comeback video that's now deleted. <laughs> and I would mention that I would start uploading my music as well as some art, some logs and whatnot. And here I am today. The channel's still up and running, but the main primary focus now is my music and uploading song covers and other shit that just comes to my mind. <laughs> I don't know where this is gonna take me, you guys. I mean, I know that this is only just the beginning, okay? It doesn't happen overnight, but you know, we'll see where it all goes. <laughs> I wanna take a moment to encourage everybody that no matter what it is you're going through, no matter what obstacles you have in your way, keep working towards your goals. No matter what it takes, you got it if you have to break the rules. All my teenagers out there, sometimes you gotta embrace that rebellion so you can work towards what you wanna achieve in life, okay? Be a rebel. <laughs> Always be yourself and never let anything or anyone stop you from doing what you love most. It's something that I would always tell myself when I was 10 years old. Woo! I swear, even at 10 years old, I had a way with words. <laughs> Number 12, number 12, number 12. Sometimes you gotta let loose and be a wild ass. It's wild time. Number 12, number 12, number 12. Sometimes you gotta let loose and be a wild ass. It's wild time. Y'all, I just realized something. We made it to number 13. The number of five buck. <laughs> nah, I'm just messing with y'all. You know, Taylor Swift doesn't even care if people think that 13 is a lucky number. Like, she just goes with the flow. Hashtag Swifties. Hashtag 13 Club. Speaking of superstitions, that brings us to our next topic. Don't believe everything the internet or other people for that matter tell you. You never know, they could be telling you lies about stuff, they could be manipulating you, they could be deceiving you in order to just get what they want. Like, say you're like me and you don't have the best eyesight in the world. Like, I know I've been wearing glasses for like the past decade or whatever, but you're really insecure about that. And you wanna try and find a solution other than just wearing glasses or contacts. So you see this pill, you see this um, prescription online saying that um, the effects of improved eyesight actually work and that it's from a very, 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 very good doctor um, with lots of years of experience. Now, you don't know what could be inside those um, tablets or whatever, but without thinking, you go ahead and order the item. <laughs> Little do you know you're making a really, really bad man. <laughs> By the time it arrives to your house, you are so excited. You just can't wait to try it out. You can't wait to actually feel the effects. You can't wait to have more better eyesight. You can't wait to throw them glasses out the window and throw them contacts away and start taking this new supplement. Now, during the next few days, you don't see the effects yet. Then all of a sudden, you start noticing that your mood changes, you start having hallucinations, acting like some wild rubber donkey that and you start realizing that the supplement you brought online wasn't at all what they said it was. It was something far, far, hella worse. <laughs> and you realize it was some kind of dangerous pill. You guys, 
don't be naive and don't believe things so easily, especially when you're on the internet. Like, not everything is what it says it is, especially because you know it might not even be that credible at all, you know? The same goes for some people too. Like, you have to be really careful about the stuff people tell you. There are some honest people out there in the world. Like, I know um, we've all lied before to a few white lies. I know we're doing that too, but when it comes to the truth, I do my best to be honest in every single situation that I'm in, even if it means like having to, I don't know, potentially hurt someone. <laughs> But, you know, just always stand by the truth. Don't believe people's lies. Don't trust everybody so easily. The only person that you may as well be trusting right now is Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Lord above, and his scripture. It's for all my Christian friends out there, even if you're a non-believer, even if you don't believe in Jesus Christ like I do, or if you believe in something else, that's fine. You do you. I truly respect that. I'm very respectful of everybody's uh, beliefs. Everybody is different, but you know, when it comes to Christianity, you always got to keep your faith in Jesus and not be a part of this world that we're living in. Just keep your eyes on the word. Number 14. Have fun with pets. <laughs> this is Daisy. She's my kitten. We've had her for the past four months, so. Say hi. They're all looking at you. Say hi. You guys, I have such a great love for animals, and I love cats. Oh my gosh, <laughs> she's trying to climb over here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so sorry, that got way out of control. But yeah, I have a really big <laughs> passion for animals, and I love my cat so much. I'm a big cat person, and it's a great way, it's a great pastime for just separating yourself from you know, the internet, separating yourself from YouTube, and just, you know, taking time out of your day to spend time with your pets is always fun and enjoyable. Except when they go crazy, because when they go crazy, whoo, man, it's a, it's a whole nother story. You guys, I have to keep a serious eye out on Daisy, the cat I just showed you, because she is wild. <laughs> like, she will literally hop up on the kitchen counter, try to eat all the crumbs, try to eat off of the dishes and everything. Like, it's just a pain, a real pain in the ass. You guys wanna hear a funny story? Okay, so her and Furball were out on the living room one day and they were fighting each other. And <laughs> Daisy went behind the couch. She literally jumped up in front of Furball, smacked her in the face, and then went back down. <laughs> My other cat, Furball, she's two, and she's she's okay. She's a little bit more laid back than Daisy is, but you know that's just the thing with these mature cats that they're not as playful or feisty as the little kittens are. But you see, I think the thing is that when you train a cat to be really playful and stuff when they're young, they kind of sort of keep that you know energy inside of them. They but that's one of the things that I always look for when buying a cat, is that they'll always play with you and they won't be so boring and just sit there looking at the toy like, what the heck are you doing? What is that thing? <laughs> They're not really getting anything fun out of it, you know? <laughs> it's always good to have a cat that will interact with you because that's when things are good. <laughs> Hi, kitty. Everybody's looking at you. You're the star of the show. Meow. <laughs> hey, come get the toy. Oh, <laughs> she's engaged. Okay, come on. <laughs> I'm literally swinging it over so that way she can, like, get the toy. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Can you stand up for everybody? Oh, oh. <laughs> you just snatched it out of my hand. <laughs> All right guys, so number 15, don't compare yourself to other people. Now guys, this is an important topic that I'd like to discuss with you guys because it's something that I'm going through myself currently. Yeah, as I've mentioned before, I'm always on the internet. I'm always on YouTube and Google and I'm always looking up famous people 
and sometimes I envy what they have and I can see how it's affecting me. Sometimes it makes me feel as though I have no authenticity in my life and it makes me regret not starting off my whole music career, YouTube career when I was younger, when I was just starting out. And that's the reason why the last few days I've been trying to limit how much time I spend on my phone and on YouTube and on Google, but honestly, it's been really hard lately, so I'm gonna need all the prayers. <laughs> so if you're somebody that's watching this and you have the same struggle as I do, I want to let you know that you should never compare yourself to anybody, no matter how famous they are, no matter if they started out when they were still young like I did. You are unique in your own way and you should be grateful for everything that you have right now. And even though it may not seem like much, like I, you know, I, I came up in a poor family and we don't really have those kinds of things that you see all of these other people in the news have. No way. I might not have the kind of life Taylor Swift has or the kind of life Miley Cyrus has. It may seem so good and so <laughs> extraordinary on the outside, but a lot of these people started out young and innocent and some even came from a Christian household like I do. Then as they got older, they went through this phase and they started getting into the wrong things, getting into drugs, started becoming more sexual and promiscuous, and they soon get so far gone from God, it's like God doesn't even know these people anymore. See a lot of these people doing very simple, very bad things like promoting sin, promoting homosexuality, blaspheming the name of God, showing off their bodies too much. That's not the kind of future that I want for myself. Hollywood is evil. The music industry is evil. The entertainment industry is evil. People are becoming more and more evil. I want to use my talents and abilities and gifts to do what the Lord wants me to do, to do His will. Because having a rooted, deep relationship with God is the most valuable and most beautiful thing a person can ever have. More valuable than all these famous cars, all these um, houses people have, all that money. God's word and what he says is the most beautiful thing and most valuable thing a person can ever have in their life. Like how many singer-songwriters do you know write scriptures in their songs? So guys, just be glad that God puts you on this earth and don't compare yourself to any anybody not anybody on the internet anybody that you see at school who looks like they have everything when in reality they might just be dead inside be grateful for the things you have even if it doesn't look like you have much you are so much more valuable than any of this material stuff and most of all God loves you so much he blessed you with an abundant life and he doesn't want to see you go astray like a lot of these people are doing he has a better plan for you so be happy be content in the things you have right now all right guys so once again I had to move over to my bed because my phone was low on battery so all right we have one more to go and then we'll be finished so Number 16, give it to God. Guys, words cannot describe how much love God has for you. I know there are a lot of people who see God as this person who always condemns people. I know there are a lot of people out there who see Christians like me as people who are judgmental or overly critical and all that. But God didn't mean for us to condemn people at all. And he had a better pur he has a better purpose for us. It's just to spread his word and to spread how much he loves us. He says these things in the Bible so that we may be saved. And trust me, God understands all of your struggles. You know, Jesus, he went through it all. He had lots of people around, you know, the different cities mocking him. And especially when he was on the cross, like everybody was laughing and scorning him because he was simply preaching his word. He was simply doing God's will. He knows every single struggle that you've been through and because 
He loves you so much, He will always be willing to help you. You know, it says in the Bible, Jesus said, Ask, and it may be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. I remember last May, the spring dance was coming up, and we were in a bit of a hurry because we knew that it was going to be in a couple days, and we still needed to find, you know, the stuff I needed. Since it was... The, in, the, since the theme was masquerade ball, we needed to get some uh, gloves and a mask. We looked at every store and we still couldn't find what we were looking there for. So I began to get worried and I began to get anxious. And so I was in the car. I remember crying out to Jesus, Jesus, please see to it that we get everything we need for the day of the dance. I don't want to not be able to go. I don't want to come unprepared. And then the next day, my mom came home and she told me that she had found a place that sold literally everything you need for prom, whether it be bags, earrings, gloves, masks, just everything, including dresses. And that's when I realized a miracle had just occurred. Guys, I'm telling you, God is just so, so, so great. He can understand your struggles and he knows everything that you have been through, so he's not going to punish you for that. And in fact, when you cry out to him and ask him, hey, look, I'm really in a bad situation. I need this. I need I need guidance. I really do need a miracle right now, Lord. When you cry out to him, he answers you. So never be afraid to reach out to God in your most hardest times. He loves you so much and he will help you out. Well, guys, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for bearing with me. It's been, uh, man, it's been like a whole month now since I've, you know, started. And I'm so glad to be able to, you know, finish with a good positive message for you guys. And I hope you guys were able to get something out of this video today. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends, comment, subscribe for more videos like these. And I hope you have a very blessed day today and stay safe. Take care.